what you want to give your attention to is hearing him. Just simply taking time to listen. You have to know the sweet, intimate touch with him and behind closed doors when no one can see because all the public stuff is wonderful, but oh, it's so that you could fall in love with him. Thousands here in Budapest. Jesus yeah, is Jesus my very best friend. It's the Jesus that they let your butt out. I am extremely tired. My meditation on the plane was this. In Philippians it says that we worship in the Spirit, glory in Christ Jesus, and put no confidence in the flesh. When the mornings are not designated for him who will illuminate the entire day, when he's no longer what's kissed, loved, and adored, you have fallen. We can hold on to our doctrine and still be fallen. Jesus is showing. We can hold on to our disciplines and still be fallen. You can hold on to your duty and still be fallen from first love. I find that the more attention that I give to his presence, the more these things provided for in his person are easily my, my, my way, my internal life. I find, that, I find that joy and peace are found in simply giving, giving attention to his presence. What has God wanted from the very beginning, if not our hearts? The very first commandment, He's, he says, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength. He wants every bit of you to love him. That's his desire. Our only confidence should be my heart connected directly with his. My only confidence should be his presence with me. Go to bed. Yeah. Got your Bible, babe? Can I have it? I mean, are you gonna, aren't you preaching tonight? I should probably bring it. Brooke and I both spoke tonight to the, the married couples. Uh, I emphasized Philippians chapter two, laying our lives down, emptying ourselves, because that's how Jesus is. And Brooke emphasized keeping your heart. You have to keep your heart. What'd you think tonight, babe? Did, did you did you enjoy speaking? Um, I enjoyed talking to them. Yeah. yeah. Humility clears the way. There's a there's a story of a young Catholic girl, and she used to love to look up at the stained glass window windows with a Saint a, a picture of Saint Francis there with a bird on his shoulder or something. And she would stare up at these stained glass windows. And one Sunday morning, the Sunday school teacher says, "Does anybody know what a saint is?" The kids look at each other and they're like, I don't know. And the little girl staring at the stained glass window says, oh, oh, I know. The teacher says, what is a saint? And she, she says, they're the ones that the sun shines through. What does that mean? Humility removes all the obstructions so that the light of God and character of God can come through you. It says here in Hebrews chapter 9, it says that, for Christ did not enter into a holy place made by hands, a figure of the true, but into heaven itself to appear now before the face of God for us. Jesus appears before the face of God on your behalf. This is why you can experience God's wonderful presence. This is why you can experience the face of God is because Jesus stands before the face of God for you. You wanna go where there's food? <laughs> what? I used to drive down here every single day when I worked for Christ for All Nations. Those days of praying in tongues in the warehouse for Reinhardt, when I was working for Reinhardt Bunky, and picking up people from the airport, and literally closing the blinds, and making sure things were clean, and shipping out product, and you know, all of those little things that I was doing, walking in his presence, in the midst of all that years ago. That's what this part of the city reminds me of. 
just being with the Lord and faithful to him and his presence. A numberless multitude surround him, worshiping him night and day. There's a man up there and every eye is looking at him. He condescended from glory into the restrictions and frailties of a human body. Why do you love him? I've never seen anybody swoop down so low. Scripture says, he who waters will himself be watered. So I really felt like I was drinking while preaching. But preaching Christ as altogether lovely and beautiful will never be old. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians 8 that the uh, ministers or the messengers of God are a glory to Christ. So it's the glory of Christ that is the highest honor. To proclaim the excellencies of Jesus Christ is the highest honor. Getting away from people, getting into a quiet place where I can focus my heart on the Lord, as uh, I remember Matthew Henry wrote, up with your hearts, up with your hearts. It's time in the up with your hearts. Just quiet before him, letting the heart enjoy and worship him. And in this place, there is a seeing with the heart. The heart begins to see and sense just lingering in the sweet sense of his presence, his words begin to become real. It's as if they uh, materialize in that sustained place in his presence. There's no weak spot. He is in every way perfect in all of the ways. And when we realize this, we won't look to those people who are incomplete to do something that only the most complete person can do. you see the fear of the Lord in the Bible is Genesis chapter 22 and Abraham raises the knife to kill his son God says don't kill him and what does he say to him now I know that you fear me because you have not withheld from me you have not withheld from me fearing the Lord is withholding nothing from him You know what God esteems? Sometimes we esteem gifts, we esteem healings and miracles, and these things are wonderful, they're all part of him. But you know what God esteems? Someone who is contrite in their heart and who trembles at his word. Just close your eyes right where you are. Yeah, just create a solitude right where you are, right there. Turn all your attention to him. 